this is a very safe state, very, very little violent crime, with or without firearms. Why do we need to regulate them anymore? Well, I, um, there, there are a couple of things in my bill. One of those things is about the size or the capacity of the um, automatic feeding device, the magazine, um, which is really a common denominator in a lot of the um, violence happening all across our country. You know, Vermont is a part of a bigger whole, and to the degree that we participate in crime elsewhere by exporting easily obtained firearms here, you know, we're complicit in some of these things, and I think we can do a better job um, monitoring who gets guns. I am not opposed to law-abiding citizens possessing whatever guns they want, but we need to do what we can do to keep weapons from getting into the hands of criminals and people who will hurt us. The magazine proposal, from my perspective, was to have a civil conversation about the degree of lethality of the firearms that are on the market now. When you have 10 shots in your handgun, you can kill 10 people pretty quickly. When you have 30 shots in your handgun, you can kill 30 people pretty quickly. If you look at the breadth of mass shootings over the last three decades or so, the common denominator really is the semi-automatic handgun, much more so than the, you know, what's been defined as an assault weapon. So the handgun really is, you know, and the handgun with a large capacity feeding device is um, the common denominator. So I, I think that talking about the capacity issue with the magazine is a legitimate debate that we ought to have. Uh, the fact that we are exporting many of these as far as the exporting weapons to other states, where, where do those facts and figures come from? The mayors against gun violence have been studying this issue for a very long time. They have a report online, and Vermont is ranked 16th in the nation of exporting firearms that end up in the hands of criminals in a very short time from sale to crime. So that's kind of that's one of the measures that they use is the, the time to crime. Um, and do we know how this works? Do people who, who perhaps couldn't get a weapon in another state come to Vermont? I don't know that they're coming to Vermont, but what is happening is that there are a lot of straw purchases, people who would not lawfully be able to purchase a firearm are able to find somebody to go in and purchase for them. And because we don't regulate private sales, at all. Um, it's pretty easy to do that. Does They're anybody regulate private sales though? No. So why would, again, I'm just trying to figure, I understand right. that's well, what they said, but I mean, if I can't buy, if I'm a felon, so I can't buy a gun in Massachusetts, right. I could get a straw person there. Correct. Just as easily as here. Right. But the so, guns up here are cheaper than they are in other states. And this is, this is the, this is the sequence of events. Guns are cheaper here. There is a growing problem with heroin coming into, heroin and opiates coming into this state. It has become a huge problem in our more highly populated areas of the state, like Burlington and Rutland. Because the guns are cheaper here and fairly easy to get, they're traded for heroin. They leave the state with these drug dealers and they end up in criminal activity in other states. That's the sequence of events that the mayors against gun violence have tracked. And that Vermont, because it is easy to get guns up here, you can go to flea markets apparently in southern Vermont and buy just about anything you want and nobody's looking. So my whole point about putting this into state statute is we need more boots on the ground covering this issue. We have five ATF agents covering the entire state. And it's not enough. We need to engage our local and state police in trying to solve this problem. It's five ATF agents for the whole state. And the way the law works now, even though by federal law, a convicted felon may not buy a weapon or, or possess a, fire, a weapon or possess a firearm, he, there's, we, can't, we can't enforce it. O only those five ATF agents, Correct. or maybe an FBI agent if he's around. Correct. 
can enforce it. A state police officer, a county sheriff, a city police officer cannot we have enforce no that law. Authority to hold anybody or to charge anyone with a crime under our state system. We can call ATF and if they have resources can send someone out to deal with whatever the situation is. But meanwhile the person may have left. Right? Exactly. Right. right. So I mean you know there's a little bit of time that we can hold someone if we know that a federal authority is coming to deal with the situation but seriously they are dealing with much larger issues here. To me, this was just a gaping hole in our state statutes. And have you talked to Vermont law enforcement yes, people about this, and are they concerned about it? They are concerned, and they're willing to step in and help enforce these things. I have talked to a number of law enforcement people who have brought this issue to the attention of this legislature a number of times. Uh, former Senator Illuzzi introduced a bill, I believe in 2006 or 2007, it was before my tenure here at the State House. Um, that did just that. It, it codified in state statute that convicted felons are prohibited from possessing guns and can be charged with a criminal offense for that. It went nowhere. And that should not be a gun rights issue because the Supreme Court has said that this is something that the law can do. Correct. It may with, uh, restrict the right of felons or the mentally ill Correct. from having firearms. Correct. And this is another provision of your bill. Now, would it actually make it against the state law also, or would it just somehow give state law enforcement the right to enforce federal law? No, we have to actually make it against state law in order to charge in state within our state system. So state's attorney or attorney general would then be able to bring charges in our state courts. The, the link between the drugs and the guns, it seems to me that a person who's not happy about your legislation would say, well, why don't we just take care of the drug problem? Wouldn't that end the gun problem then? Possibly. Right. I, you know, I don't think it's going to stop the export of, of guns from Vermont. Um, so I do think that there is, you know, beyond that whole drug trafficking piece, there's a bigger issue of guns being sold fairly inexpensively here. They have a much higher uh, market price in places like New York and Massachusetts because they do have more restricted markets there. So, so you think that's why they're cheaper here because we don't have the restrictions? Yes, absolutely. Because uh, markets, markets work. Right? Market works. <laughs> right. That's the way they work. Um, the part of you, you had two law enforcement officers la last week when at your press conference and they were for some of the bill, including Correct. this stuff, right. but they weren't for the magazine restriction. Correct. That, and apparently you're going to meet more resistance on that. Sure. I mean, that's, you know, it, it's a controversial part of the bill. There's no question about that. I think it is a legitimate debate that we ought to have. Um, I asked people how, during the time period of 1994 to 2004, they were able to defend their families when these devices were also banned at the federal level. Right. They and were they, grandfathered in, right. just like they are in my bill. Yeah. So, you know, I don't, I don't see this as. In really, other words, nobody who has one is going to exactly, have to. We're not going to exactly. confiscate. We're not talking about confiscating them and melting them down. Right. There are, there's a grandfathering clause. There is no intention of turning law-abiding people into criminals simply for possession of that feeding device. It just would be new ones. It would be that at some point, at some date certain, we would not sell them in this state anymore. And again, wouldn't somebody say, what's the, I guess the, some people are saying, all you're doing is making yourself feel better in the wake of the Newtown tragedy. Correct. Because so many people have these 30 uh, round magazines anyway, that isn't this just sort of making a statement for the purpose of making a statement? You know, if you look at what happened during the uh, federal ban from 94 to 2004, the federal provision said that you were able to sell whatever's in your inventory. So guess what happened? Gun manufacturers went 24-7 and just made as many of these devices as they could during that time period. So for all intents and purposes, there was no ban. There was an end run around having that ban. So these devices continued to be lawfully sold because they were part of the inventory. I think that if we're serious about trying to contain the lethality of some of these weapons, we have to start somewhere. We have to take a first step. 
And this may not have a huge impact, but it's a first step in having a sane conversation about, about these weapons on our streets.